Good morning, everyone. It's Serotonin. I am reading the most incredible book. It is called He Walked the Americas. Holy crow! This is a seriously mind blowing book, and yes, it's about Jesus in America. And it's not Latter-day Saints. This is nothing to do with that. This is to do with the stories that were never told about who they called the Pale One, the Healer, the Prophet, Jesus, spelt C-H-E-E-Z-O-O-S. Z is Canadian for Z. Um, I find it very interesting that they have this one, The Life, Legend, and Teachings of Quetzalcoatl, which was one of his names, apparently. Um, and uh, they chose that cover for it, and this one's kind of more interesting and a lot more compelling because, really, it is about Jesus. So why not put him on the front? This book is completely and totally mind-blowing. Not just because of the stories which were collected over time uh, by an author called L. Taylor Hansen, who, if you check Wikipedia, is actually listed as a science fiction author, which is kind of crazy. But anyway, um, it is just, it's so incredible. It, 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 there's just little pearls of wisdom, little moments where you're like, what? Oh, well, at least I was. And it just pulls so many things together. And one of the things that um, is really interesting um, is one of the names. So uh, the, the legend is, and as far as uh, we all know, um, in my opinion anyway, legends are lore or law. Law as uh, the accent of uh, some cultures will, will offer that pronunciation um, and all of our history is his story it's not our story right they talk about the black black robed sacrificers of the priesthood now who does that sound like I was raised Catholic uh, which I just found out through holographic kinetics I can actually go back and break those contracts because you can reloop time so i no longer have to be have my soul confined to the times that i whoops partook in communion which is literally eating the body or and or blood of jesus uh which is really sick when you think about it that's cannibalism and it was something that he in this book was going around the world to every country to every nation to every city to every people and um teaching them the way of love there was one commandment which was to love one another that's it it's all there is it's all there is that needs to be done is to love one another that is all and the sacrificers is a religion that is being pervasive here it talks this book talks about the turtle, the great turtle, it shows a picture of the great turtle, and I will show you if, if I can find it super quick. This is almost identical to the picture in the book of what the turtle looks like. Um, there is so much confirmation of other things in this book. Um, one of the other things they talk about not just the black robed sacrificers of the priesthood which i think is just completely mind-blowing but that jesus apparently came to as i said to every tribe to every nation um, and would choose 12 disciples 12 people in order to bestow uh the incre increased wisdom of beyond love one another and as he would leave each people he would um, choose another Quetzalcoatl which would be their 
their main person to help them remember their teaching, his teaching of to love one another. Um, it talks about how Thanksgiving is an ancient tradition. Um, we still eat the same food. It's pretty incredible. Um, one of the names given, um, in as was his tradition apparently, was to give uh, each group, each tribe, or each nation the opportunity to name him in their own language. And some would ask, you know, what was your name of birth? What was your name in childhood? And, and that's where the name Chi Zeus comes from. It's so incredible. Uh, there's so many people that are like, well, it couldn't have been called that because the letter J was invented or was, you know, put into the English language so much later. Well, there's many, many different ways of spelling pronunciation. And this is what is so incredible. It just, it, the ignorance of my own mind and others is just blown right out of purport. Like it's blown right out of the water in this book. It's just incredible. Um, something else, one of the names that he was given was Hurukan. Hurukan, H-U-R-U-K-H-A-N, Hurukan, meaning hurricane or the great storm. What? There's another line and it says in the beginning of the book that there is no, you are not allowed to transmit this information without the written permission of the author and the author died in 1976. So, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to break that promise, but I will say one thing. I want you to read this book. All of you, anyone who's watching this, read this book. It's incredible. Get it wherever you can and read it. You don't need to be a believer. You don't need to be religious. I'm certainly not religious, but I definitely believe in God. And now I, um, my, mm, I'm just... I believe these stories, they're incredible. They were collected over many years from many different tribes. Uh, they talk about how the, the red man, all of the tribes came from one nation that went under the ocean. And one of the first places apparently that Jesus went was actually in, um, in Polynesian islands in, um, to, to see to meet with the Maori and um, you know everybody talks about how like Hawaii kind of grew up out of the out of the ocean the you know the the, um, the volcanoes were formed from under the ocean floor and up but I have long I mean I've been to Hawaii and it felt like home I have long thought that there's no way it came up from the ocean it sank and I wonder about this because the Maori and the Polynesian people, many, many different islands that are very far from each other, and yet they all have a connection to them. It's just, this book is unbelievable. The One of the other pieces, and I'm sure there's going to be many, many other pieces that, I just want to read this to you, but I won't break the promise that was requested by the author because I am so in awe of this author. She's an incredible woman. And she, she was an incredible woman. She, in one of the passages, they talk about, I think it was uh, Kocha, um, and I don't remember the name of, so they talk about different places that he went and that, you know, he was, uh, the, the new names. They talk about all these cities, these incredibly beautiful cities, these white cities, these these. Um, elegant cities, the streets lined with, with precious metals. I mean, it's incredible. And they talk about how all these cities and these people were, have since been swallowed up by the jungle. Um, that many of them were, were destroyed in civil wars between each tribe. And then finally, after um, Columbus came, it talks about Captain Cook and Sir Francis Drake and how they were mistaken um, for the return of Jesus because they had bearded men and sort of bearded faces and pale skin, but that they actually came and left these people um, without, without fuss. Um, although at one point, Captain Cook, James Cook, came back in a hurry after a storm, and because he was afraid of the wind and the water, they knew that he was an imposter, that they, they assumed that he was being an imposter, uh, that he was trying to pretend that he was Jesus, and so they killed him. And... 
they talk about how in one place, like I was saying, in, in I, I believe it was a city called Kocha, and it says, is a, there's a line, and it says, the priesthood got news through obsidian mirror that the prophet was returning. Obsidian mirror. What is obsidian? Obsidian is black. A black mirror. What is a black mirror? A television screen. A computer. A smartphone. It says the priesthood got news through an obsidian mirror. And this book was written in 1963. It is mind-blowing, people. This book needs to be read. It needs to be shared. It blows all the stupid narrative we've been given right out of the water. Especially, part particularly to me, that there is one holy land. Because it was blessed because he was there. No, he went everywhere, apparently. He went everywhere. And this is the interesting thing. It's been gathered from different people speaking different languages. He went, he spoke to the Algonquins. That's up here in Canada. Algonquin. He came here. Today, I was actually right near Algonquin. I was up in the Kawartha Lakes, which is north of Peterborough. And I went to go see petroglyphs. And there is a picture of turtle, the turtle. And it says the turtle was particularly important to God, to the great spirit, which is what Jesus refers to as heavenly father or great spirit. And the turtle was particularly precious to great spirit because the turtle agreed to carry the recreation of the earth, not the creation of the earth, the recreation of the earth. turtle was precious to great spirit this this book is it's just it's incredible it's blowing my mind it's just incredible it's so beautiful it was given to me by a friend who owns a bookstore as blowing my mind. So, whatever you do, try and find this book. Try and read this book. It's incredible. It's life changing. And what's even more interesting, I looked up this person because I was hoping they weren't dead and I could get permission. She. has an incredible life. An autobiograph autobiographical sketch by Hanson begins with her memory of staying with her parents in an abandoned fort after the Indian Wars. In 1919, she writes, she was initiated into an Ojibwe tribe after she, she suggested to the tribe that they did not, they not kill, sorry, the agency doctor been said, protest his appointment to Washington administrators. She then enters a lifelong project to study of Native American legends. Legends is history. History is lies. Starting with September 1941, issue of Amazing, Hansen wrote Scientific Mysteries, a regular column of nonfiction articles that continued in 1948. I want to find all of this. Combined with her other nonfiction articles, she wrote nearly 60 articles during this period, appearing from 5 to 12 times per year. Her first article picks up on the work of her father regarding the continental drift. She reviews criticisms of the theory and presents evidence that support it, such as geologic continu continuities and homogeneous species that appear on different continents. She presents a field of researchers working together so that the veils of mystery are being pushed back from the library, which is the past. Hansen credits a series of articles as being the state start story of her investigation of how different stories of the Americas might have some common origins. Hansen did not shy away from controversial issues surrounding anthropology as the last vestiges 
of scientific racism fell away in the years before World War II. In July 1942 article, for instance, she asserts contemporary standards of color are far too superficial. She points out the skull shape of the minds, which would have supported craniometric pro propositions that races differ culturally because of their distinctive culture geometries and does not affect their intelligence. And while she reports on findings that are now not credible, such as the idea that the population of Africa is a recently evolved trait, type she is remarkable for suggesting that africans are not primitive but more evolved than other human types later hansen begins experimenting with pseudonyms the article america's mysterious race of indian giants appears in the december 1946 issue of amazing a wall the writing style is recognizable of that of columnist al taylor hansen it was credited to chief sequoia a second story by chief sequoia spirit of the serpent god appeared in 19, June 1948, an issue of Amazing, the story of Fire Trail, credited to Navajo Ogemak, appeared in the January 1948 issue of Amazing. She also credited second story to Ogemak, Tribal Memories of Flying Saucers, that appeared in another magazine Palmer edited, Fate, in 19, the September 1949 issue. As she completed her survey of the Native American legends, Hansen published three nonfiction books, at first some considerations of in addition to the Taylor Wegener hypothesis of continental displacement, details the elaboration of the continental drift theory purposed by Frank Bercy Taylor. Her second book, He Walked the Americas, is frequently cited taxonomy of Native American legends that report of a light skinned prophet. Mm, that makes me so mad. Her last book, The Ancient Atlantic, 1969, surveys the culture and geography of Atlantic Ocean and touches on the legend of Atlantis. Hansen wrote the book, He Walked the Americas in 1963, in the book drawing from Native American legends, folklore, and mythology, discussing that a white prophet had visited many parts of America. Some Mormons have used this book as evidence supporting the Book of Mormon, which depicts Christianity practiced in the ancient Americas, including visitation of the resurrected Jesus Christ. Hansen's scientific career was brief, but she not was notable for being an early woman in the genre who concealed her sex. Her first story, not her gender, her sex. Her first story, What Sodium Lines Revealed, appeared in Hugo Gernsback's Amazing Stories Quarterly in the winter 1929 issue. This story, while a Gernsback era adventure, hinges upon scientific ideas that a message is de de detected sorry, in a spectrograph in an amateur astronomer. That same year, her second story, The Undersea Tube, details an underground civilization that is uncovered while developing a pneumatic commuter train between New York and Liverpool. I am completely obsessed with this woman. I want to read everything she has ever written. Everything. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. Please, everybody, please, please, please take my advice. Read this book if you can find it. It's incredible. It's changing my life. It's changing my brain. That's all I have for you guys right now. Lots of love. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye for now.